and welcome back to the Villa View, where we are back for discussion show number 10, I believe it is, where we are joined by Dan Bodell, as per usual, Christian Stewart, at Fussy Rice on Twitter, and Chris Dolan, lifelong Villa fan. So let's get straight into it, which is the big news this week, that Steve Bruce has been appointed Aston Villa manager. How big a deal is this? I'm going to go with you first, Dan, on this. Uh, obviously, it's a, a pretty big deal, appointing a new manager, I think, after... A lot of fans will have had time to, to mull it over. I think they'll realise that, despite obviously the past, which should absolutely be forgotten, it is a very, very good appointment for, for the football club. But I think I don't think we could employ a manager with a better track record of getting teams up. I, I don't believe any other manager has got four championship or division one, as it used to be called, promotions on their CV. So I think we should be happy that we've managed to get someone in with that record because at the end of the day, Whatever fans think of the club, however big we all think the, cl- the club is, we are in the championship. And if he's the, the best man to get us out, then it, it's a good appointment. There's history of being with Blues and whatever. That really doesn't matter now, though, does it? As Dan touched on. Yeah, I mean, it was so long ago. But to be fair, some fans were calling uh, on Twitter saying that they'd quite like to see Gary Root in charge. So it mustn't matter that much. Um, I think... The thing with McLeish was that you know he, he took them down and then came straight into our club and that was that was the bit that hurt you know, um, but for me the way it's gone the past five years as long as we get somebody in there with passion and gets the, gets the players working and, and gets the players working hard um, and creates a bit of a, a fortress atmosphere at at, um, at Villa Park I don't really care who's in charge. Christian on uh, Steve Bruce as an outsider on this as a professional. You're looking in on this. Is this possibly the best point we've gone for? Would you have potentially gone for somebody like David Wagner at Huddersfield? No, I think you've you've done the right thing. I think you've gone for somebody with experience, somebody with passion. I think when you look back at the uh, Roberto Di Matteo appointment, retrospectively, you can see that maybe there are too many senior players at the club who you know, aren't too far away from him in regard to age, so there might be a respect barrier there. I think we've Steve Bruce, what you've done is you've stopped any sign of that. And I think with other manager appointments that you were looking at, there could have been that same issue. So I think Steve Bruce will have that uh, impact and respect that, that you need to get back onto, you know, into winning ways. What do you think he's actually going to do tactics-wise? Like, Because obviously he's known for playing, I'd like to describe it as dinosaur football, dinosaur tactics. They're a bit old school. Well, he wins games. So, what do you reckon we can expect from his first lineup against Wolves? He said today on AVTV that his main uh, sort of ingredient is is, is 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 to work hard. You know, that's what he did as a player. You know, he, he got to the very top of his game. But you know, I think just hard work and organisation. Because I think this season, as we've all said, it's been a bit it's been a bit sort of striker heavy. Um, players not really maybe knowing their correct positions. A little bit of a kind of a, a free for all times on the pitch, um, and you know, I, I'll take a, a one 0 win on Saturday, last minute goal, scrappy in the box. I, it doesn't really bother me. But I was actually I was watching I was watching the the, uh, the highlights from the whole Derby game last last season when they beat Derby three 0 um, and they they you know whole tore Derby to shreds. So you just don't know, you know. Obviously, it, I think he can only work with the personnel that he's got. Now, and we do have some really exciting attacking players. Um, so, who knows? It, it could be it could be liquid football, you know. I think since I've realised that that he is coming in, I've read up and I've managed to convince myself that that, that it is a good appointment. I mean, to be honest, after five years, six years of dross, like Chris says, all he'll have to do is is win a few games, and he'll be a god amongst Villa fans. I mean, to be honest, I don't, I don't go to Villa Park to be entertained. I go to Villa Park to see Villa win. Like Chris says, if we win 1-0 every week, that'll do me because all I care about is Aston Villa Football Club winning games. I mean, I'll quite happily sit there and watch a McLeish style, style of football if, if it means if it means wins. And I think, like I said before, we've, we've made we've made the right appointment. It's the right call. It's, it's definitely not, not the time for risks. I, I didn't particularly think Dean Matteo with Steve Clark as an assistant was a risk, just a, un, unfortunately for us. It hasn't worked out, and, and that's disappointing. But I think this this appointment is less risky than the one we made in the summer. And it's, it's probably a shame now that Bruce actually wasn't available in the summer because we might well be looking at us being higher up the league than we are right now. Yeah, it's a difficult one. As for the rest of the appointments, Christian, Steve Clark's left. 
And I believe Kevin Bond has as well. Um, do you think perhaps there was too many, like not big egos such, but big name coaches, so to speak? Because Kevin Bond's renowned for being one of the best coaches, or supposedly. And the same goes for Steve Clark. Yeah, both of them have perhaps gone past their sell-by date. I don't know whether they both come past their sell-by date. What I would say is that, uh, you, uh, well, like I said on the last video, you, you, there's less of a manager and more of a group of coaches under your uh, the old formation. And I think with this one, it will be more of a manager and his group of coaches. I think the one thing with Steve Bruce that you have to look at is that he's not coming off the back of a failure like most managers are when they've been sacked. He's left by mutual consent because he couldn't get the money to spend that hole. So he's still got that confidence that you would expect of a manager coming in straight away, trying to have an impact. I think he's probably the man to do it. And I do think that it was a case of too many cooks with, with Dean Matteo, who maybe didn't have as much of a voice as he should have. And that could have caused confusion and problems amongst the Villa players. How are you feeling? the playoffs or even more than that promotion you can get promotion at 15 to 2 or the title at 30 to 1 I wouldn't be lumping money on the title or top two or probably even playoffs at the moment to be honest I mean I've said all along all season if I was offered sixth I'd snap your hands off for it and I think it is achievable it's, it's a stupid league the championship and anything can happen and you can quite easily go on a run and within three four games we could find ourselves in the top six, but this football club has just struggled to put together any kind of run of substance. But arguably, Tim Sherwood did, did, did it a little bit in the when he came in in his first half a season. But we've never really managed to put anything together. It is achievable, but I, I'm not as confident as you. To be honest, I'd take consolidating with with the top ten at the moment. And I think it, it's a, perhaps a bit unfair to expect Bruce to immediately in his first season, having come in when he has. To get us the top six, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's a reasonable assumption to make. To be honest, I think it, it'll be tougher than a lot of people think. Still, even if Bruce comes in and does a good job, Chris. Um, well, I'm sort of looking to, to stay in the league first of all. Um, don't don't <laughs> don't want to get too carried away because you know I think everyone needs to see where we are and um, how many points we are above the uh, the drop zone. Um, Bruce did allude to the fact today that when he took over. At, uh, at that club across the way, um, but they were uh, they were 14th, I believe, and they went on a run and got into the playoffs, and he took them up. So it's possible, but I just want to win a game, and then we'll take it from there. I think, as as Bruce also said as well, that you know we've, we've been, it's been it's such a fine line, and you know between success and failure. I think if we had a held out um, under Di Matteo against um, Wednesday and Barnsley and. Huddersfield, Brentford, you know, would be, you know, he he wouldn't be sitting there and, and would be top, would be top five or top six, and everything would be looking pretty rosy. But so it is such a fine line between success and, and failure. But you just don't know in this league. It's such a fickle league. But I think yeah, top six would be would be our best our best chance. I can't see us getting top two, top six, if if anything. I stat I always remember now is still that if we'd have won every game where we'd been leading this season, we'd have been in top three. So as you say, we could have been up there. Yeah. And it is fine margins that yeah. we're at, Christian. How the how, how are you seeing this? Um Villa's promotion chances and so on and so forth? Because it is a ridiculously tough league and Newcastle seem to be hitting it about right, right about now. They seem to be cantering into form at a good pace. It's, you know, it's such a cliche that the championship is one of the hardest leagues in the world. And I think it is. But, by you know, there's going to be so many people saying that you can get promoted. But at the same time, I mean, you have to take into account relegation. I mean, I don't think it will happen personally, but you have to take each game as it comes. Another huge cliche. Um, I think for Villa, I think, maybe the best thing for you would be to stay in the championship for a season, get a Steve Bruce team together next season, build on it, try and get promoted next season, and then give the premiership a real shot at staying in rather than getting a team that Steve Bruce has very little to do with getting them up and then him having to rush making signings to try and stabilize a position in the premier league and then ultimately failing and then causing some sort of turmoil again with uh, him being sacked, going back down um, so I think maybe what's best for Villa is to actually stay in the championship for a season. Yeah, I'm just trying to get a quote now from Steve Bruce, who's 
said about clean slates. Um, he said about every player basically getting a new opportunity to prove themselves. Obviously, Dan, this includes a Mr. Gabby Abonglo, we assume. Uh, Mika Richards, you could put in this category as well. I'm trying to think of other players. This may be Alan Hutton, perhaps. And Alan Hutton strikes me as a player that Steve Bruce might like. As for the rest of them, do you, do you, would you give any of them a chance again, Dan? Firstly, my heart sank when I heard that Alan Hutton was one of the only people who was name-checked in, in Steve Bruce's interview with AVTV. I found that pretty, pretty disappointing. <laughs> um, Mika Richards, to be honest, I, I know people slag him off and, and he was awful at centre-back, but as a right-back, I would much prefer to see him in the team than Alan Hutton. I, th- I think he offers offers you more. He's, he's strong and he, he's at least got something to his game, whereas I, I don't see Alan Hutton having anything of use to us other than he... Then he tries hard. Uh, Gabby, I don't think he's going to get back in because at the end of the day, you look at the, the players we've spent big money on and they all play in the final third. He's Even if he's given a clean slate, is he better than is he better than Codger? Is he better than Ayer? Is he be- better than Grealish, McCormack? Is he more useful than Gested? Probably, he, he probably isn't. So there's a long, long way back. And if, also, if you bring Gabby back in, to the fray, you're also stunting Hepburn Murphy, who looks looks a real prospect. So, as I say, I'd, I'll never hate Gabby. I, I completely understand why why people do, and he was a disgrace last year, a, absolute shambles. But he, he isn't going to get back in. I don't see any way in which he gets back into this team, bar a, a massive injury crisis. I mean, I'm sure Steve Bruce probably is quite, quite quite aware of him because. Managers often remember players that have done well against them, and our Bond has always done very well against Steve Bruce teams. But I don't, I don't see any way back for him, and I think it's probably the owner will put pay to it if Steve Bruce does want him back in. I think a lot of fans were really harsh on Mick Richards last season. I felt that he wasn't as bad as fans were saying. He was playing in a position that, let's face it, nobody knew he could play anyway at centre back, and he's proven that he can't play there. Um, as for Alan Hutton, I don't think he's good enough. And then the other one everyone forgets about is Libor Kozak, but Libor Kozak, Rudy Gestead, which one do you go with? To me, it's got to be Gestead, Chris. Um, yeah. What do you see about these players like uh, Kozak, Abonglaw, Alan Hudson, Mika Richards? Would you give any of them the chance? I mean, I've, I've never rid of Gabby, to be fair. I mean, the only thing Gabby's, you know, he's he's, he's had a great goal scoring record, but he's been with us for 10 or 12 years, so he should have a, a, a good record, but... um. The, the the thing the thing with Gabby is was was his pace, you know he's he's got a dreadful first touch. Um, his pace for me was was his was his best attribute, and that's gone. Um, Hutton, you know he, he, he when when Lambert brought him back after he after he he he, he, bought, he bombed them out, he, he did show some some promise, but you know he's 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 off the shop as well. Uh, Kozak, nah, I'm not having him either. Well, I think we're we're yet to see Richards playing his best in his best position, as, um, as Dan was saying. I think you know, I'm sure we'd fancied him at at, um, at centre back last season, but um, I mean, he was he was horrendous against uh, Luton. Um, he was all over the shop. Um, I think I think we're fine. I think the only thing that that, that we're that we're that we're lacking in is an extra midfield player. You know, I don't I don't think we need to bring in those guys in. Possibly. If anybody, possibly um, a right back to fill in for Delat, but I think Bakuna's had a pretty good season when he's yeah, filled yeah. in at right back. Um, so the only thing I would look at is trying to maybe get Jordan Leiden fit and trying to maybe play him in in the middle with um, with Tishbola and Yednak. <laughs> this is going to be a bit hard coming from a neutral perspective. I'm going to say that Steve Bruce is a more traditional manager than Di Matteo, so there is a chance that he might favour an old guard. Um, ultimately, it's going to come down to what tactics he plays. Players like Gabby Abonnaho were dangerous because of their pace, and he's lost a lot of that in the last couple of years. So I suspect that he won't see too much of, you know, too much playing time. But I think somebody like Richards might be able to get back in, especially um, Steve Bruce. It seems like the type of player that he might give a chance to, and Mika Richards surely got to try and grab the ball by the horns and and try and make something of himself uh, after falling out of favour. So I think you might see them introduced from time to time. They might give them uh, some league time to see what they can do. But ultimately, I think it's going to come down to what what how he sets up and, and the tactics that he decides to enforce. 
But while we're on the note of Gabby Monghall, it is his 30th birthday today. So happy birthday to Gabby Monghall. Um, I know I'm for one, I'll put my hand up and say, I'm one of the biggest critics of Gabby and everything about him. And I'll always criticise him. I'm always critical of how he's wasted away his career and so on and so forth. But I want to know from all of you your best Gabby memory, because let's face it, he has created some special memories in his time at Villa. And you never know, he might create some more again. You don't know. But start with you, Chris. What's your favourite Abonghor memory? Um, well, you, you know, you've got the the goals against the Blues, but um, I really enjoyed his, his brace against uh, Norwich in Lambert's first season. Mm. Um, I believe he was that, that 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 great killer pass from Westwood. I think it was in the eighty sixth, eighty fifth minute. Um, shot across goal. We win two one, and then you know we kind of go on that on that sort of mini resurgence in in, um, in Lambert's first season and that that was kind of one of the catalysts so you know he, he has popped up in in big occasions and he and he, he has done the business but um like like I've said before he's, he's just su- such a wasted talent obviously the, the blues goals and all that to be fair he scored a lot of a lot of big goals that's one thing about him especially under O'Neill he always popped up when we needed him he even scored an important goal when Gerard Julio was manager away at West Ham I think probably the one that stands out for me, other than the Derby goals, is that perfect hat trick mm. he had against Man City. I mean, he was really on top on top of his game at that point. I think yeah. he was in and around the England team. If that had been a player playing for Man U or Chelsea or whoever, you'd see that on Sky Sports News all the time, talking about the perfect hat trick. And it's probably got got overlooked actually, but that's probably the one that sticks out for me: the perfect hat trick. Yeah, that's the same with me. That was mine. Christian, and as an outside, he might not be able to remember as much as him, but I imagine it's going to be a derby goal, isn't it? No, I'm going to go for uh, Chelsea against Aston Villa in 2007, the four-all game uh, that Chelsea. we played. Yeah. Um, he, abs- he didn't score, but he, you know, every time he got the ball, he looked like he was so dangerous. I remember... Uh, Carvalho got sent off against him for a two-footed lunge. I think there were three red cards in that game. Uh, Shevchenko scored twice. Agbongoho looked different level and was involved in almost everything. And I remember, I just remember watching that game and him picking up the ball and me fearing that something was going to happen every time. And I think that's around that time is what you would expect of a player like Gabriel Agbongoho and why he was so feared by the defenders he came up against. I think obviously the bulking up. Didn't didn't help him. He, they tried to change the way he played a little bit, and he's he's not bad with his back, with his back to goal. To be honest, I, I think he's, he was pretty decent with his, with his back to goal when he did change his game slightly to play as a, as a lone front man. But he's just never never kicked on. And I don't know whether it was a case of he got, he got too much too soon, got got comfortable, and then obviously last season he's obviously looks like he's eating everything he's ever laid eyes on and carrying a lot a lot of timber and didn't look like a footballer, and he's made a lot of mistakes, probably even mistakes that we don't know about have probably gone on off the field. I'd love him to come back and score a hundred end up scoring a hundred goals for Villa Forest back at the Premier League, but it is it isn't gonna happen. I think I think he's probably finished and and it is a shame because as a local lad, he had the world at world at his his feet. He was at the club that he supposedly loved, but it's it's all just got away from him and it, and it is a shame. But as people would say I, I'm sure he feels okay about it because he's got millions of pounds in the bank. I'm not going to ramble on because, let's face it, not much has really happened at Villa in the past few weeks. It's literally the main focus has been about Steve Bruce coming in. And I think that we can all sort of agree that we didn't really want Steve Bruce at one point, but we fully well know that we're in the capable of hands of manager now that can do a good job for us. And I'm quite looking forward to the rest of the season, even if it will be dinosaur football, or as Chris may think it might be liquid golf football. We never know. So if you did enjoy this video, make sure you drop in a slight thanks to Chris and Christian for joining me and Dan today. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, lads. And we'll be back very soon with fan cams from the Wolverhampton Wanderers game. 5.30 kickoff. Make sure you get your tickets because they're still so, some are available. So make sure you get your tickets for that. As I say, drop a like below. Comment what you thought about this video. What do you think about Gary Bonghall? What do you think about Steve Bruce? Let us know. Make sure you've got the post notifications onto the videos. And we'll see you soon. Because quite frankly, I was hoping the championship was going to be a, a one-season thing. But looking at the way it's going so far, that, that's probably not going, to, not going to be the case. So if Bruce is the man to get us up and then whatever happens after that with managers in the Premier League, if we do go, he's irrelevant. If he gets us up, then it's a good appointment.